I'm really happy to be here. Um, so I run digital marketing at Dropbox, and like Brian said, it's kind of disguised. It's called, it's actually growth marketing, but we disguise it. We don't call it that. Um, so I, I was asked to come and share some of my, some of the insights of how Dropbox has grown in the past few years. Um, I, to set some context, I have been at Dropbox for about a year, so uh, there's a lot of things that Dropbox has done through the 11 year journey that they've been on that um, have come, culminated in the recent IPO. Um, I'm going to focus on the last few years, which has led to the tremendous amount of growth that you've seen in the, uh, for the company. Um, how many of you actually know that Dropbox is actually four different products? It's not just one pro oh, just one person. <laughs> I call this growth opportunity. Um, so Dropbox actually, uh, in the last two or three years, I think, has introduced, uh, sorry, not two, three years, um, Dropbox Business was introduced three years ago. And last year, we launched this thing called Dropbox Professional. And these products are geared towards very different audiences. They have very different sets of things that happen with them. Um, Paper was our most recent product. It was launched again about nine, 10 months ago. And it's a very different product. It is actually a product that's anchoring us or moving us towards what we call collaboration-based content. Um, so moving us away from file storage, which is what Dropbox has traditionally been known for, towards content-based collaboration. Um, so what, who we are today has been um, a success story like many of you guys have seen through the news. Um, we are the fastest company in terms of getting to revenue run rate of $1 billion. Um, we have about 500 million plus users in our ecosystem, of which about 11 million people actually pay for our products. It's a pretty small number of people who are actually paying for our products. Um, but despite that, we've created this tremendous consumer-grade enterprise company. What I mean by that is uh, using our freemium products and our freemium kind of users, we actually take that and we make this into an enterprise sales company. So how did Dropbox do this? Um, also remember the context. So Dropbox is going head-to-head -head against Google Drive, Microsoft OneDrive, Box, and despite everything that happened, we um, IPO'd at a pretty decent price, and we are currently valued at about $10 billion. So how did all of this come about? The, the first, uh, so what I want to do is talk about three big growth levers that the company has kind of adopted over the years. Um, there are multiple kind of tactics and experiments and all that sort of stuff that kind of fold under these big growth levers. And I'm, uh, this presentation won't address that. I'm happy to take those questions offline uh, later during the day. But the, the first thing that Dropbox did really well was we mapped out what we thought our go-to-market model was going to be. So if you look at this, this kind of two-by-two two matrix, um, you look at the deal sizes, which for us is the, the, how big these license, licenses get, and the price, which is the price per product, the, the, the three big boxes we focus on are um, the enterprise sales, obviously for big, large deals of some of our more premium products like Dropbox Business. Um, Self-serve, which is our, um, the, kind of the consumer retail piece of our business where anybody can go onto our website, log in, put in your credit card information, and get access to licenses. And then uh, a, a pretty innovative go-to-market motion called self-serve assist. What self-serve assist is for licenses or for products that require one specific human touch, where people are, oh, I want this product, but I'm not quite sure if this will actually fit in with my model. We actually give them access to a, a human person to talk to and um, get, basically ask about features and things like that. So we call that the smart touch self-serve assist. Um, where we are intelligently mining our users who need that nudge to get over the conversion hump, and we give them an interface with a, with a human person. So these are the three big kind of go-to-market motions we have. And Dropbox has been extremely efficient or extremely um, good at growing in these three areas. Now, the thing I want to point out here is the, the top two, the enterprise sales and self-serve assist, can you guess how, what percentage of our growth, of our revenue comes from those two? Less than 25, less than 50, greater than 75, straw poll. Less than 25, greater 
25. Greater than 25, less than 25. Greater than 50, anyone? Less than 10. It's actually less than 20%. So, uh, <laughs> good job. <laughs> the the self-serve piece is more than 80% of our revenue comes from people who are logging in to our website, going, um, putting in their credit card num information, voluntarily and willingly giving up all of their contact information to us, and, um, and signing up for licenses. And some of these licenses are range anywhere from a minimum of five to 20. So how, how did we build that kind of a self, and, and to Brian's point earlier, this has created a self-reinforcing loop that just keeps going. And so how did Dropbox actually get this um, motion, this engine underway? The, the, the important thing um, to kind of focus on here is uh, we really rely heavily on analytics. So we are, um, one of the best things I've noticed about Dropbox is how amazing we are at segmenting our audience. So we've got this 500 million user base. We really dig into how many, how these people, how our people, our users are using Dropbox. What kind of files are being stored? How are they collaborating with each other? How many times are they sending things around? So based on that, a lot of different insights come out. So this is too small to see, my apologies, but this first chart represents, within a company, how many people are actually adopting um, Dropbox. So take an example of BBC, for instance. We created a cluster map that says, of all the people that we have in our ecosystem, we know that so, ma so many people are clustered within the BBC uh, universe. So here is the cluster of people who are sending files, sharing, collaborating, and that becomes one cluster. Over time, we build that cluster. So we get people to invite more into their teams. We get them to share more stuff. So the second chart you see here is that expansion of that cluster. So more and more people within BBC start using Dropbox. Then our enterprise sales is deployed against BBC. We say, hey, Mr. CIO, we've got 500,000 people in your company using Dropbox within their teams. Isn't it time for a wall-to-wall -wall deployment? So that's been a huge success for us in terms of um, breaking into the enterprise space and driving enterprise sales. Obviously, that's you know, less than 10, 20% of the story. So the, the, the main story is how does this happen? Right? The first two boxes, how does that happen? We are really ridiculously rigorous in focusing on the customer journey. We talk about how, when do people come in, how do they churn out, at what points do they first find value, so what happens from the time they enter our website to the time they start a trial, what happens from the time they start a trial to the time they um, actually share a file, which for us is the first indication of value. What happens after that, how do we increase the number of users in that team, how do we increase the number of licenses, how do we get them to buy a bigger product. So we are extremely rigorously focused on the, uh, the life cycle of those users. Um, retention, engagement, and monetization, like Brian mentioned. All of those are extremely important kind of critical growth levers for us. So what we have done really effectively is we have said, how can we help drive up the value of each of, the, of our cohorts? So for those of you who don't know, a cohort is defined as, somebody, uh, as, a, as a set of people who start a trial in a particular, say, month or a quarter. So the, this chart below is, uh, has three squiggly lines. The bottommost line is the, um, the value of the cohort of 2015, and the, top, the second one is 2016, and the topmost is 2017. So the, you can see from the chart that the, the value of the cohort has doubled within the space of three years. Meaning, people come in, they buy at a certain rate, buy a certain number of licenses, or you know, 20 bucks a license, and then by the time three years are done, they are paying two times more money for our products. And you'll see, it's not, in, not just the doubling the size of the cohort, or the value of the cohort, it's also, you look at the 2017 squiggly line, it just up, shoots up. Because we are getting much, much better at getting people to um, go to the right product, buy the right product, buy the right number of licenses. So all of that, 
has been done with almost like a fanatic focus on how do we get our freemium users to discover paid products? Um, how do we get them to buy into the, the paid products? How do we get them to expand the number of seats? So do they see enough value in, in our products that uh, when they start with a three license deal or five license deal, uh, suddenly they start thinking, oh, I, I want this for my entire team. Or they go to their boss and say, hey, I think this is amazing for the rest of this team as well. So it suddenly becomes a 20 license deal. This is one thing that I found typically is a lot of tech companies focus on this idea of landing the users. And, um, and then you know, once you get the deal signed or get the licenses signed, you kind of forget about customers for a while till it's time for them to renew. And then there's like a frantic amount of activity that happens around, hey, it's time for you to renew. Tell us your credit card information again. How much more do you want? You know, so there's a period of almost blackout that happens between the time customers come into our, into our product or service but till the time they are up for renewal. Um, what Dropbox has done really well is thinking about the customer journey as a whole and thinking about retention as a social network would. So we really get very scientific about where are the users coming from? So the, the, this section of the box is how do we acquire these users? How do we acquire these premium users? Once they come in the journey, how do we engage them and prove the value? Um, and how do we get them to, how do we land an upgrade? The landing the upgrade is, is the tricky part where we use a lot of experiments, a lot of tactics like um, in-product messaging, emails, and it's all extremely targeted and segmented to users who we think have a propensity to want more. Um, and then finally, how do we expand and retain them and upsell them potentially to new products? Similarly, on, that was, uh, that's on the freemium side, and then on the paid user side, the same kind of flow happens. Uh, so because of this stuff, our net revenue retention is almost 100% for all teams, meaning year over year, teams are just being retained, and our cohorts keep building up. So um, our future opportunities are, we still have 300 million qualified users in our database, if, I mean, in our network. So as I said earlier, um, we have about 600 million users who, we, who have just come into Dropbox because of our brand equity and because they know the product. And as we saw from before, um, a lot of them still don't know that we have a product called Dropbox Business or that we have these paid products. Most of the time, they think about Dropbox as, I need to store my files and then move on. But um, we have this huge opportunity to, to tell, talk to people about how we are a, a business productivity file storage kind of a solution. So we still have a bunch of opportunity there. Um, we, we have a lot of opportunity to analyze usage patterns for our users based on how they're using the product, again, what kind of files they're using, um, who they are, so what their personas are. Are they IT decision makers, BDMs, are they marketing and sales? And we, we, run, we are starting to run a lot of targeted campaigns to get them to upgrade uh, for their needs. So uh, Brian talked about this idea of jobs to be done. Um, that's a huge important concept for us. We segment our audiences and think about what jobs can Dropbox do for different audiences, and what can we do to help um, drive that forward? And then finally, uh, because of the strength of our uh, ecosystem, there, there's just a tremendous amount of input that we get from users of what are the pain points, and how do we um, help drive, create new product experiences. One of, the, um, one of the ways we've done that recently is this, uh, this, the product called Paper. And for those of you who don't know what that is, it's, it's, a, it's a collaborative space. So think of it as Google Drive, all the applications of um, Google G Suite into one, one space. So you can essentially edit documents, edit Excel, edit, edit PowerPoints, all in one place. Um, what, what Paper has allowed us to do is to become much better at engaging and retaining users. So the, we introduce Paper at the, um, the adopt and use phases of a customer journey. 
and people then start using it and they get stickier because they're using those products. So that's another way that we've been able to drive more retention of our user base. Um, so the, the final kind of slide, final takeaways are the, the, the main thing for us is the freemium model has, has been hugely successful because it has been this huge viral machine. And because we've been able to build up that 500 million plus user base, we have been able to leverage that data set to create proprietary sales algorithms to essentially target different enterprise sales companies. Um, we call ourselves the first consumer-grade SaaS model. A lot of SaaS companies actually don't have the, the amount of free users that we have. So we have really been able to use this kind of digital distribution model to go after both big and small companies, and particularly our sweet spot of SMBs. And then finally, user experience. Um, our founders, Drew and Arash, have been are, uh, personally involved in the user experience and how lightweight the product needs to be from a user perspective. And I think that's been a key selling point across the years in, in creating this idea of Dropbox as a um, nice to use, easy to use, and you know, just creating that brand equity of um, uh, this as a completely user-friendly kind of a product.